Hey guys, it's Gage, and today we're going to be talking about visual activism and queer identity. So this video essay is part of my queer studies course, and this is going to be kind of my final project for that class, as well as something that connects with my thesis project that I'll be working on later this year. So to start off with, what is visual activism? So activism is basically taking action to affect social change. And visual activism is the use of the visual medium in this activism. So this would include film, photography, and art that can be seen. Visual activism is unique because it can be used to document specific moments in time, and this is especially useful in the cases of groups that may have been left undocumented or erased from documented history, such as queer people, trans people, and people of color. Visual activism, I would argue, is much more personal because it requires people to confront reality in the form of the image to confront a person rather than a sentence on a Wikipedia page and to see their reality or alternate forms of reality that we ourselves don't experience. I want to mention two specific examples of visual activism which have inspired my project that we will address later. So these two examples will include the work of Zanella Maholi, I hope that I pronounced that right, and Tongues Untied, which is directed by Marlon Riggs. So for our queer studies class, we read the piece Gender Within Gender, by Gabeba Badarun, I hope I pronounced that right as well, which focuses on the photography and the visual activism of Zanella Maholi. Maholi is a South African photographer well known for her photography documenting black, queer, and trans people. So her photography is very unique because it depicts these people in black and white photographs, which creates a sense of timelessness and familiarity even though they depict people who are seldom seen in popular photography and in documented history. Her work afforded these individuals the respect and the dignity that they deserved because her photography was not invasive in a way. She didn't ask them to pose in ways which would make them uncomfortable. They were allowed to pose themselves and she helped them out with this. And they've also been allowed to depict themselves in ways that they wanted to be depicted in the photographs. So in this way, her framing of them was very compassionate and portrayed them as they wanted to be portrayed rather than looking at them with the eye of fascination that other photographers might have otherwise done. Now, these photographs served as sort of identity documents for these individuals because for many of them, they either didn't have identity documents or these people had identity documents that depicted them incorrectly with the dead names, for example, with photographs that they didn't want to have on there that they were uncomfortable with. And so having these pictures which accurately depicted them as people was something that gave them back their identity documents and something that belonged to them and was truthful to who they were. By photographing them, Maholi effectively creates a new history. She documents these underrepresented people by making pictures of them and thus the image, the photograph, becomes a form of existence. It brings it into existence that these people are part of a visual history now. So here we see the image as fact and the image as proof of existence. Effectively, this is how she counters the common erasure of black, queer, and trans people. Likewise, in Tongues Untied, a 1989 experimental documentary by Marlon Riggs, history is also created of a group that is historically underrepresented. So Tongues Untied is an experimental documentary that combines documentary footage, personal accounts, and poetry and music to create a sort of new kind of documentary on a topic that we seldom see in film. This unique format is used to uh, depict the specificity and uniqueness of the black gay identity. The film is deeply personal in its telling of real life experiences, discussing racism in the gay community, homophobia, and lived experiences of AIDS among gay black men. The film itself also makes space for these individuals in history by documenting them on camera, thus making and creating a visual history on their own of these individuals and their stories, effectively creating a sort of footprint in a timeline of when this documentary was created and sort of eradicating the emptiness and the lack of stories at that time. This representation is really important because it also creates a very visual history that is basically calling into existence um, these issues and these experiences by documenting them on camera, making the community in a way real in historical and documented sense. This film has also gone on to inspire many others, namely inspiring the creator of Pose, which I think is just a really neat piece of history right there. And this connects to my thesis project because my thesis project also addresses a sort of gap in the history when it comes to the representations of queer and trans people. So my thesis project is going to be a short documentary 
interviewing and documenting the experiences of trans students, trans university students in particular. Now, if corona allows, I'll be filming this in the fall, but who knows, to be honest. So the reason why I decided to cover this topic in a short documentary is because we often see trans people represented as either young people in high schools in documentaries about adults, but we don't really see any representation of trans students who are in the university setting and the unique experiences that we find there. And I've honestly heard so many stories that it is surprising to me that there hasn't really been much research in this space. So one of the professors at our university, um, Sarah Brownell, who works with the School of Life Sciences, has actually done a research project on LGBT inclusivity in the classroom and the student experiences by surveying them. I went to one of her presentations one time, and at the end of her presentation, she noted that they didn't have as much data and would have to do more research on the experiences of trans students in the classroom and what we can do to further accommodate them. So I wanted to create something that would allow those students to speak for themselves on camera and to effectively create their own history by talking about their experiences and documenting them themselves instead of someone else writing about them or researching them from outside the community or representing them on their behalf. So this would give the power back to the community, especially those who have been very much affected by the university space and who are uniquely challenged by it so that we can bring awareness to this issue. And I would hope that by creating this film, we can kind of bring awareness to those unique issues faced by trans students in the academic space. One of the reasons why I found Tongues Untied and the work of Maholi very inspiring is because one with Tongues Untied is that you have individuals who are not necessarily being interviewed they are mostly just speaking about themselves and telling their own truth, but they are not being asked questions. There is no kind of investigation angle. There is no investigator or like interviewer on camera. It's just these individuals talking very simply to the viewer. And this is something deeply personal and I find that affords the subject a lot of respect that I really want to bring into my short documentary. And then with the work of Maholi, the way that she allows them to determine how they're presented on camera and affords them a lot of respect is something also that I think could really be brought into this project. All right, that's about all I have for this video essay today, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I would encourage you to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments about the subject, just put those down below and I will see y'all later.